We are not responsible for your behavior. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. I'll get Britain working again with tax cuts and cheese. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio. We're on episode five of 2023 with Philip Jones and myself, Philip Keeler, in the UK. On tonight's show in the UK, there's BBC Backlash after it took their top sports presenter off air over social media tweets. Plus, in Germany, women in Berlin can now swim topless in the city's public pools. We are downloadable wherever you get your podcasts from, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify and even Amazon Music. This is News Talk. First, here's what's trending around the world. In Ukraine, both sides have reported inflicting heavy losses as the battle for Bakhmut continues. Ukrainian president uh, has said Russian forces had suffered more than 1,100 deaths in the past few days, with many more seriously injured. Russia said it had killed more than 200 Ukrainian service members. In Saudi Arabia now, and officials have executed a Jordanian man whose family say he was tortured into confessing to drugs charges. Hussein Abu al Kahir, who was 57, had eight children, was a driver for a wealthy Saudi. He was arrested in 2014, accused of smuggling amphetamines. In the US next, and authorities in Texas have advised American citizens not to travel to Mexico during the spring break holidays for security reasons. The Texas Department of Public Safety said that drug cartel violence represented a significant threat for anyone crossing into the country. And staying in the US, a newly detected asteroid has a small chance of impacting the Earth in 2046. According to a tweet from NASA this week, they say if it does hit, the asteroid, roughly the size of an Olympic swimming pool, may arrive on Valentine's Day 2046 to give you some very happy memories. Or not. Imagine being hit by a meteorite on Valentine's Day while you're uh, smoozing around on the dining room table uh, and uh, drinking and and then you get hit by a a meteorite. Um, Your thoughts on that? (laughs) That's one of my dreams. That's on the bucket list. (laughs) I've Uh, always wanted to say, did the earth move for you too, darling? Right then, to our top story in the UK, there's a BBC backlash after it took their top sports presenter off air over social media tweets. Uh, Gary Lineker was axed from the weekend's football show uh, over comments he made on Twitter on Britain's uh, migration policy, in which he likened the language used to set out the government immigration plans to that used by Germany in the 1930s. Well, the BBC say he broke rules on impartiality, while Lineker believes he can say what he wants as he is a freelance sports presenter. Good on him. Uh, Phil, he is a you know sports presenter. He should be able to say what he wants. The BBC look very very in bed with our corrupt government over this don't they um yeah i mean historically uh, the bbc have been accused of being left wing and when the government haven't had so much influence over them but the government are threatening the bbc constantly with reducing funds or funding and because the conservative party hold the funds and the right you know decide how much money the bbc get the bbc feel as though they have to comply with the government wishes so the government are controlling free press directly Mm. terrible really i I mean i think uh lineker was 
I, I don't know whether he's right or wrong with what he said, but I mean, uh, I'm a big believer, and so you are uh, in freedom of speech. He should be able to say what he likes in his own time. I agree absolutely. If he's he's a sports presenter, I mean, if we're talking about impartiality, the le- it looks as though the BBC are no longer impartial because yeah. of the fact that they they appear to be supporting a right wing government as opposed to having an impartial point of view. They don't really seem to give a balanced opinion. They don't announce protests. Protests are removed, you know, like big marches are often removed from the news. We never hear about them, mm. which I find quite sinister. The BBC should re- be reporting them, whether they're in impar- you know, that's an impartiality because it's a protest. You know, they're probably saying, oh, no, we can't report some protestation because it's one-sided protestation but they could have equally give the defense to the yeah. argument by speaking to the mps that they're complaining about or whatever the situation is that they're complaining about they could always give that point of view alongside a, a you know a massive protest so it's got it getting all a bit big too much too much like big brother for me yeah very very dangerous situation i'm very pleased that the other sports correspondents and sports presenters and pundits have backed Gary Lineker I think we need to move towards a more free press where our country is far too restricted by political correctness although not the law a lot of people seem to think it is and also people being pulled up for um various things they say on tweets I mean you can get I think you can people are getting nicked for a bad ill-mannered texts or something which is totally contravenes our rights to human you know our rights to freedom of speech Mm. and again the legislation in this situation is contravene appears to contravene the um, European Convention Human Rights Article 14 which states that anybody has the right to seek asylum basically um it's the right to seek refugee protection in the United Kingdom um, for those who arrive ir- irregularly. In effect, blocking any immigration is what Sunak's trying to do. Mm. It's inhumane, really. I think it's a dreadful situation. It's a dre- dreadful comment on us. We signed up to protect refugees in 1954, apparently. And we should continue in that vein. We're supposed to be the harbinger of, of um, justice and fairness, but we no longer are if we continue on this vein. I think it's to do with the fact that we have very greedy people in government and we have people who are now educated in very isolated circumstances and those people who are educated in isolated circumstances, i.e. online, spending formative years in front of computers instead of out. I'm not saying everybody does it, but a lot of people just isolate themselves and then go out and make judgment on the world it's very difficult if you don't know anything about the world the more the w- you know about the world the easier it is to understand what's going on and the more correct your decision if you are incredibly wealthy and live in a bubble how would you know what goes on in the world how would you understand the consequences of your actions you just won't most of the people who are in politics now are career politicians they don't know anything other than politics so they're practicing politics for politics sake in if in effect what happens when they do that is the only thing that they're concerned about is how far they can get up the tree in politics Mm. and they don't care about what they're actually doing what they're actually doing is affecting people's lives that should be what they should put at the forefront of their consideration other way uh, uh, as opposed to their own political careers that's the problem britain's going to be um, in politics helping to fund a detention center now in france uh, so this was uh, big news this week between uh, Sunak and Macron. Uh, we're going to be putting together a five hundred million pound package to stop refugees trying to cross the channel over three years. Over three years. What are your thoughts w- with that? Is that going to work, or is this just another another attempt to stop this? But actually, it, it's just not going to work, is it? It's not going to stop it. I think it, if you have a refugee centre, I don't see any problem with having a refugee centre. If someone wants to go to the UK, they could go into the refugee centre and say, this is what I want to do. Will you consider my application to become a refugee? I mean, it it, it, it can work alongside other things. It's the, safe, the problem is if they... If that once, as soon as they block the safe passages, then people resort to desperate means, and those desperate means are going over in small boats. A lot of the people who come over from 
um, Syria or wherever it may be, they don't necessarily understand English very well and they wouldn't necessarily understand that they won't have any rights if they get here on a small boat anyway. So they'll probably continue to do so because the traffickers aren't going to tell them any, give them any information about that. So it's between, you know, it's. I don't. I think that the thing about it is, is that they're effectively banning the acceptance of refugees in this country, along with their Rwanda idea. You know, send them to Africa. We're supposed to be. We're supposed to offer asylum to people as a country. You know. I mean, we could have an we could have agreements with other countries which are more stable. I mean, Canada is absolutely enormous. I think it's bigger than the United States of America. It's got a relatively low population. We could create. We could say to people, we could have a refugee system where we tra- take people to Canada or Australia and say, look, you know, we we're we're a bit short of space here in England. So would you mind awfully going to Canada? It's a lot. Ch- it's, it's easier for you to create a life there, and they'll probably go, okay. I mean, you can do things like that. I mean, just be reasonable and talk to people. They don't, but they don't seem to understand that that's a possibility. I mean, to me, it's blatantly obvious. We should be talking to Canada as well as France. Yeah, yeah. And we should be talking to Australia yeah. as well as France. You know. Mm-hmm. But there are other things involved with this, you know, because if you go Saudi Arabia are involved in the bombing of Syria, they're part of the war. And United Kingdom supply arms and jets to Saudi Arabia. And they train the Saudi Arabian pilots to, to bomb Syria. So we're effectively gaining billions of pounds in revenue from Saudi Arabia by selling them arms and providing them training to kill people. So now we're complaining about the fact that we've got refugees from a war which we're feeding. So we're feeding the problem at the same time, at the same time saying, oh no, they can't come over here. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to reduce the number of refugees, how, how about you stop supplying Saudi Arabia with arms? That would be a good start. The problem with this is not necessarily, it's the wars themselves that need to be addressed. Yeah. And Syria is just going on and on. And why? Why? What well, doesn't do any good to anybody except those who are, who are, who are I would say evil, who are profiteering from war, making thousands of millions of pounds, you know. Going to bring it back to Gary Lineker. Um, Yes. And we've got some breaking news uh, with Gary Lineker. It says, and this is coming out of a lot of news organisations at the moment, Uh, Gary Lineker is to return to presenting sports on the BBC. Um, It's after he was taken off air, of course, over those uh, tweets criticising uh, the government's uh, new policy on migration. They understand that the corporation will apologise themselves to the match of the day presenter. Um, So that is news coming in from various news organisations reporting that Gary Lineker will go back to presenting match of the day and that he will get a full apology from the BBC over the handling of that. That's very interesting. I'm glad that they've they've done that uh, or going to do that rather. It makes a lot of... uh, a lot of sense to me that, uh, that that they would. Good. <laughs> what were you doing there? <laughs> Nothing much. I'm getting a cup of tea, love. Oh, okay. So we we present the show via video link, so we can uh, see how ugly we both are uh, each week, and uh, uh, the disintegrating of our hair over the last four years of presenting. Uh, I mean, I've lost, I think, most of my hair since we started this. Speak for yourself. <laughs> this is Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. We'll be back uh, right after the ads. We're going to be talking about topless women in Germany. Phil will like that, of course. <laughs>
And you're back with Strange But True uh, Radio. Something I totally forgot to talk about in the previous segment, Phil, is yeah. that we ran a Twitter poll on uh, Gary Lineker. Uh, should uh, BBC uh, Match of the Day presenter Gary Lineker be able to say what he likes on social media? We had a really good response from people this time. And uh, I was, yes, yeah, really pleased. So thank you. Um, so... We said, yes, he should, no, he shouldn't, or I don't care. Well, 82% of you on Twitter uh, said, yes, he should uh, be able to say what he likes. 0% said, no, he shouldn't. And only 18% said, I simply don't care. I think it's bad that this much as 18% of people suffer from so much apathy. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's very disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. But um, overwhelmingly, people uh, think that he should be able to say what he likes. Apathy is very dangerous. I mean, if the good do nothing, evil thrives. Yeah, exactly. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should have a view. Get a viewpoint on things. and Everyone should voice their opinion. Um, people who sit on the fence, are, I, find, I think, are pathetic, quite frankly. Mm. There, you go. there you go. Maybe PC or not, I don't care. Quote that on Twitter. Phil thinks you're pathetic people that don't exactly. have opinions to sit on the shelf is pathetic right then in uh, germany women in berlin can now swim topless in the city's public pools um it's been so i'm sucking a mint i'm not reading the story out in a weird way i shouldn't be sucking a mint while i'm reading sorry i've got a cough Um, It's been seen by some as a step forward for gender equality and is apparently symptomatic of the Germans' love for free body culture. Uh, The new law was introduced after a female swimmer was prevented from going topless in uh, one of the city's pools back uh, last year in 2022. Um, Phil, what what are your views on this? Is this, I mean, is this all right for women to swim topless? I think I think I'd like to have a quite a view, few views on this actually. <laughs> for left, right. for me, it's not a problem at all. I think we should bring it in into Basingstoke and other 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 cities throughout the United Kingdom. Guildford. In fact, I feel as though you know I'm not. I wouldn't feel right wearing a bikini top so i think nobody should wear one i tell you what they should just make it mandatory those councillors in guildford would not know what to do with this new law if it came to guildford would they (laughs) they don't know what to do with any law in the councillors in guildford they're terrible they haven't got a clue what's going on anywhere (laughs) the most risk adverse council in the whole country (laughs) they're afraid to do anything they're just Possibly they're bordering, as far as I'm concerned, they're bordering on insanity. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, this go, this all goes back to sort of uh, nine, 19, uh, 19th century, they say, where the Germans have a love for being quite free and open. Uh, I guess the, the Europeans do have this free and open culture. I can't see... Uh, uh, this coming to to the UK, where women are allowed to go topless in your local swimming swimming centre. Uh, I mean, I think the the swimming pools will be full of pervs. No, I think that's wrong. I think that everybody should just be able to change in the same room because otherwise, that's discriminating against heterosexuals. Okay. What? Well, okay. <laughs> well, so you, you're if, talking if, about mixed, you see if mixed... you if you're gay and you go to a swimming pool and you get changed in the same sex same sex um change room that means that's quite exciting yeah if you're if you're not hetero if you're not a homosexual it's not exciting so that's discriminating against heterosexuals isn't it uh maybe maybe so therefore i think we should all have just mixed changing rooms on the grounds of equal opportunity. Well, I guess... All I'm not the, being all sexist the... here, I'm just saying. Equal opportunity, there should be no... De- we're all the same sex now, apparently. Well, all these so new we genders. just have one change room? I, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, all these new genders that are out there, not male and female, trans and everything else, which is fine, in, in my, my opinion, um, wouldn't have a problem with that. And maybe that is a sign of, of uh, us or humanity growing up. 
Uh, to be honest with you, I think it's... Um, I'll be honest. I'm, instead of messing around, I think truthfully we should just leave it as it is. <laughs> we don't want men and women changing in the same place, not really. Well, 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 there are differences between the sexes and they should be celebrated, not tried to cover over. All this business about having 23 different genders is a joke and it should be stopped. It causes more trouble than you could possibly imagine. The number of people who are transgender in society is very, very, very small and they should be treated with some respect. But the whole of our culture mm. doesn't need to start banging on about how everybody should have rights and this, that and the other because it draws attention to something we should, we should just accept. Instead of talking about it all the time, we should just accept it. And historically, it is recognised that when people start to become obsessed with gender, that is the beginning of the end for society. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds odd, but psychologists say, because you, once you start becoming obsessed with gender, you use that as a side in order to um, avoid real issues. Yeah. So what's happening now is people are arguing about political correctness and gender issues and all of these other things when they sh when the real issues are ignored. The real issues like how do you deal with the the problems with an overcomplicated bureaucratic society bureaucratic society which is um sucking our time away from us and and damaging us because these people actually produce nothing at all other than more and more bureaucracy on pond bureaucracy that's a big issue that should be addressed but no we're spending our time worrying about whether or not somebody's topless in a swimming pool i mean it, it, it's to me it's we're 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 all moving in the wrong direction it just these things need to be addressed i admit but we we're, we're just becoming totally obsessed with it yeah, There's I think we are more important it, things to be considering. Yeah, I think there is a bit of an obsession over over gender issues at the moment, from what I can see in the media. Uh, I do like the fact that we, I like personally as a gay man, and and who's probably a bit more into gender issues than maybe you are, because it is in my realm of LGBTQ and that community. I like the idea that we do have gender neutral toilets that the whole gender thing for some people who are male born in a into a female's body is very anxiety based and i think they benefit from that but i think uh, also i think the media is going a little bit over the top with with stuff like this well when i was a builder all those years ago right they used to shout and swear at me all day. You just got used to it. It was water off a duck's, duck's back after a while. You just have to man up and accept the things. We, we're all running about like snowflakes. The slightest thing upsets us now. It's ridiculous. We, you just get used to life. We're removing ourselves from life. We're stopping people talking. People are afraid to speak and voice their opinion because they might offend somebody i mean offense is part of freedom of speech we you must be allowed to offend and i don't i don't think we should have gender neutral toilets if you've got a penis you go in the male one if you go have got a vagina you go in the female one that's it if you're dressed as a woman and you're trans and all that type of thing and you want to go in the male in the female because you, you're dressed as a woman fine i don't have a problem with that either hmm. so I, don't, I think we're I think we're pandering to things which aren't as important as they are as they are made out to be, and I think that we should man up to it. And, and the other thing is, you know, homosexuality on continent of continental Europe in many countries is just regarded as normal day to day routine. It's not no one really bothers about it. It's, you know, I don't know, this is my problem, this is the problem I have with it. Why are people are running around like, oh, I'm, I'm a bit sensitive about going to the toilet. You're going to the toilet, man. Who cares? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Who cares? Does it really matter? You know, if you're standing next to someone, get the gents who's dressed as a woman and he's got his cock out, I don't give a damn. Let him crack on. What's all the fuss about? You, you know, I, I do a promo of the show. I think uh, that will be in the in the promo of the show this week. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, are, you, are, you drinking, it, are you drinking wine at 10 o'clock in the morning as well? No, it's whiskey. Ah, OK. Well, that's all right then. <laughs> Just set me up for the date. No, it's tea. It's Chinese tea. Let me have a look. Here it is, Chinese tea. Oh, nice. Can you see it? Yeah, it's China, very good. It's very good. It's red. It is very good, actually. Um, so, <clears throat> do you think we will be seeing topless 
I mean, where does it end? Where does this end, right? So Germany now have, you're, you're allowed to be topless, just like men. Are, are we going to have totally naked swimming in Germany? Where does that end? Well, they do have time. totally naked. Sin- I don't agree with that. I mean, I don't really like, I don't think that people should be naked completely because it's not very attractive. No. Don't matter who you are, you know. Um, and, you know, women should be allowed to wear swimming costumes if they want to and or not. I mean, I don't I don't even necessarily agree with women having to go, being able to go topless in swimming pools. I don't, actually. I mean, in, in, in a public pool, I think it's probably better if they're covered up. But out on the beach is a different matter because you're in a different environment. That's fine. Don't have a problem with that. Or if you, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't really care. I tell you what, when I went to, um, I think it was France, uh, when I was, a, when I was 16 with my mum and dad, we were camping in France. Um, and oh, I, I wanted to go swimming, but I had the wrong sorts of swimming trunks. I had big like boxer swimming trunks and you were right. in France in this pool are you oh. only allowed to wear tight speedos? I thought that was a bit perverse. It is a bit perverse. I mean, in Spain, you're not allowed to swim without a hat. That's very You strange. have to wear a swimming cap, which is a pain in the proverbial. So, you know, there's all these rules and regulations, and maybe they should just do them on each individual swimming pool as they wish. Yeah. Well, I don't think people should, swimming pools should be forced to allow women to go topless if they don't want to. You know, even if they are saying it's the women's rights, well, you've got a right as an owner of a property to have people to conduct themselves within your rules, mm. you know? So where does it end in imposing freedom of whatever it may be on people who don't necessarily want people to wander around topless in their swimming pool, mm. you know? Exactly. I don't know. Um, it'd be interesting to see how that story develops, if it does. Um, that's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio uh, News Talk uh, for a mixed-up generation. Phil's drinking his Chinese tea. That looks very nice. It's a red colour. Why is it a red colour? Can you tell me? Do you know? Well, it's just, it's just what colour the leaves make the water come out as. Oh, uh, OK. OK. I might have to try that. I do remember when I was in China, we were in a place called Fuso and I was uh, filming dragon boating and I was a bit of a star in that at that point in my career. And uh, we were going around all the tea rooms and uh, it was it was just a lovely, lovely thing. It was very hot, drinking a nice cup of tea without milk. Uh, Pulled you down. It's it's really good. All right, so that's it from News Talk. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. Uh, Join us for a new podcast each week to download every Monday by around one o'clock UK time. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. Political correctness has gone way too far. It's time for a revolution. 